Today I'm going to be doing a quick serum tutorial showing you this flume style synth patch I have made here at New Serum. So first things first, I'm going to be the guy that actually shows you what you're going to be, you know, like making at the beginning of the video so you don't have to wait 20 minutes. So here you go. This is two different types of drops you can make with this synth. That right there is style one, and here is style two. A bit familiar here. This is Flume, of course. All right, there we go. I had to throw in tennis court had to throw in, you know, that clip from that song. So, yeah. Anyways, that's what we're going to be making. And turn those off real quick. And, yeah, this is the patch. So, I'm going to be recreating it. So, right here, down here, I already have what we're going to be using to recreate it. We have our new patch of serum with the MIDI. And right now, with just the basic saw wave. Um, it sounds like this. Yeah, sounds pretty cool, but not quite flume, if you know what I mean. So, what we're going to be doing is, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. I'm not going to, you know, take forever on this. So, yeah. First, what you're going to want to do is going to keep that on your custom saw wave, alright? And you're going to want to bring it up to four voices to add that lush sound. There we go, we're getting pretty lush now. All right, um, yeah, unison at four, detune. We're just gonna leave that B, we're not gonna touch it. That's it for oscillator one. Over here on oscillator B, we're not gonna be using the same wave, wave table, wave form, whatever you wanna call it. So we're gonna go over to here to analog and we're gonna go to basic mini. And down at the weight position, we're just going to go up to number three, and you should get this shape that's like a saw and a square wave, like mixed and combined and stuff. Um, and you should now be hearing this. Definitely adds a bit more of that square, future bass type sound to the patch. So that right there is actually it for oscillator A and B. So now we're going to go to our sub and just turn that on add a bit of, you know, lower and mid frequencies. That right there is it for your oscillators. So now we're going to go over here to filter. All right, we're going to keep the filter on the MG Low Pass 12 filter, and we're going to bring the cutoff down to, like, 21 hertz right there. Um, and make sure to have oscillator A, oscillator B, and the, not, yeah, the sub oscillator. You're going to want those all checked. And now playing it, you obviously can't hear anything because I have all these frequencies cut out. Only the low frequencies are playing, and there's practically none. So yeah. Uh, from here, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our LFO1, and we are going to build ourselves um, a little LFO map. I'm going to bring this dot here, um, right here to this you know, like line. And I'm going to bring the curve up to about there, and this should work. This is about what you need. Um, and now we're going to do some modulation. We're going to drag and drop it onto the cutoff. Drag and drop onto the level of all three oscillators we're using. And now I'm going to get into the parameters we're going to be using. So, for your filter, we have it set at 21 hertz. And we're just going to take this, um, click, drag down, and we're going to rein this cutoff control to about 47. Alright, that's good. Now, for our volume, all of our volumes, basically, we're going to bring the initial starting point. That's not what I meant to do. All right here, we're going to bring that to about zero, or exactly zero. I don't know why I'm saying about zero. But anyways, from there, sub-oscillator is going to go up to 25% volume. 
oscillator one is going to go from zero to 100. And same with oscillator B, zero to 100. All right, now we should be hearing this. Sounds a lot closer, but something's off with the timing. And that would be this right here. We have it on the wrong mode. When you have it on off mode, um, you, it'll play halfway through, and then when your um, MIDI ends, it'll just sit there and wait till another MIDI comes, and then it'll start halfway through your LFO map. So that's what the timing issue is. So we're going to hit trigger, and now every time a new, new, a new note plays, what's a newt? Every time a new note plays, um, the LFO map will also trigger. So that fixes our timing issues. All right, so we're starting to sound pretty good, but you know, some higher frequencies could be nice, you know? So what I'm gonna do is go to LFO2, number two, I can't talk today, gosh, and just drag this point all the way over to the side, and we get this nice, you know, straight line going from corner to corner. All right, we're gonna set this on envelope mode because we want this to play once every time um, a new note hits. So from here, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our cutoff and we're gonna just drag it on. Now we have two things modulating the cutoff, all right? So basically what this is doing is as um, a sound is a uh, note, sound, whatever you wanna call it, is continued um, to play, the frequencies will gradually get higher um, because it's allowing more sound to pass through the filter. So yeah. There we go. You can already tell it makes a big difference. All right. And now we're almost done with the actual serum patch. I'll show you the after processing too. So you can make it exactly how I made it sound. But yeah, hyper slash dimension. We're going to turn that on and everything should be set at the correct, um, you know, levels. Um, you you want your rate to be at 16%, which it is, and your detune at 25. Um, if you have that, then you're good. Over here on distortion, we're going to go and we're going to select tube, all right? And we're going to be modulating our drive, all right? So we have our drive, and we're going to turn this down a little bit, so it'll be going from 0 to around here somewhere around like 60 or it doesn't really matter as long as it's within about like 30 to you know like 70 you want it to be somewhere in the middle range all right and hearing that you can hear a ton of distortion it does not sound good at all and we're gonna have to fix that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our um, filter EQ for, you know, the distortion, and we're gonna, first of all, turn it to high pass at 100%, and then we're gonna click pre, so it's filtering out on um, the frequencies you don't want before it goes and does the distortion, all right, and then I'm just going to, um, type in parameters, um, you can type in parameters by double clicking, um, if that is not enabled for you, just go to the global tab and come here to double click for type of values on controls. And that'll just save you a lot of time. So yeah, I advise that you do that. Um, anyways, our frequency, we want it to be at about 1,000, like 300. So I'm going to go like with 1,319. And our Q point... We want it to be at point 0.1. So there we go. Um, listening now. Definitely took out a lot of those low end, um, super distorted areas, which is good. But now we're missing some of those mids that really just make up the sound. So what are we going to do? What we're going to have to do is we're going to take our um, wet or our 
basically the amount we want our distortion to affect the sound. And we're going to turn it down to 66. Nice. Alright, we have that done. Now we're going to move on to our phaser. Um, and this is just a very, very common thing I've seen a lot of different sound designers do is they take the rate, they take the depth, they take the frequency, they turn them all down to zero. And usually with bass frequencies present, it will make sort of a guitar amp um, effect. But since we don't have any of those lower frequencies, it's just going to kind of warm up our mids a little bit um, and add a nice timbre to the sound. So now we have this. Um, yeah. So we have that. Now we're practically done. All right. So now one last thing in the actual serum patch before the post-processing is our EQ. All right. So we're going to take the EQ. Um, it's already practically where we need the points to be at. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, change filter types, and I'm going to go to a high pass. And I'm going to take our Q, which is basically the resonance, and turn it down a bit so it's less sharp and it's more like a smooth hill rather than a gigantic peak or a sharp cliff. Alright, that's done. Now we're just going to leave the top of the frequency, the top frequency band, at that little stepper um, shape, I guess you'd call it. I don't know. And we're just going to go to the gain. I'm going to turn it down to probably about like negative six, negative seven around there. Um, just not too drastic of a change, but just enough so that it's, you know, not too harsh on the high end. All right, and you should hear this. Sounding good. That sounds really good, but as you can tell, it does not sound the same. That one has reverb on it. So, what I'm going to be showing you is how I got that reverb sound. So I'm going to put this in the same mixer, mixer 18. And now it sounds the same. So, sadly, um, they do not have Valhalla Vintage Reverb in, you know, Serum. But, yeah. Anyways, what I did was I had a limiter. I basically boosted the amount of volume input to what I wanted it at. I also um, took an EQ and cut off these low ends, um, basically cut everything below 100 hertz, and boosted everything around, you know, 5k. So if you want to hear exactly what I'm cutting, I'll play it. If you can even hear that. That's basically the sounds, the low end sounds. Anything under that got cut. Alright, and high end that I boosted. That's what I'm using. All right, cool. Now the reverb is really what does it. Um, like just listen. It's literally the wet reverb that makes the sound. So I had Valhalla Vintage Reverb, um, one of my favorite reverb plugins. Um, yeah, and basically I just had a nice, you know, like short decay at 1.3 seconds. I had a pre-delay at about 9 milliseconds um, to add just a little bit of, you know, like transient and space in the sound. Um, just looking here at the mix, which is basically the wetness, I didn't want it like all the way wet like this, of course, so I had it at around like 23 something, I think. Yeah, and then, you know, um, all of these, you know, parameters, to be honest, do not matter too much. Um, yeah, like, these three are the base, 
the basis of what you need in your sound to recreate this reverb in a different, you know, plugin. So, yeah, that is it, guys. That is how you create a flume type synth. I really do hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, please subscribe. I'm always open to, you know, new tutorial ideas, um, new sound, you know, ideas. Please just, you know, talk to me in the comments, tell me what you think, tell me what you want to see more of, and that's it. Thanks for watching.